Welcome back Strategy Gamers, let's bring you up to speed. Last week saw the first major patch for Vicky 3, patch 1.1 called Earl Grey, and it was a doozy. There's really too big to cover in depth, over 2700 words, of which 1100 were bug fixes. So let's call out some of the major changes and links to the forum post down below if you want to read the full list. I will pop up some of the image captures of the text up on the screen throughout the review though. It's a completely new system for government legitimacy that has new penalties at low legitimacy that fully stop law change progress. It is linked to votes instead of government size. It now also has a coherence of policy platform between the parties. Yes, at the start, there isn't much difference between them, and you can see setups that allow all parties to be in government with legitimacy, but that does change as the game wears on and there is bigger differences between the parties. The other feature changes are the start to the warfare overhaul, the big warfare update we expect a 1.2 update in the new year. For now, we get a reworked morale that inflicts a base loss every round of battle to both sides. There's also been a hot fix already in 1.1.1, fixed a bug that caused morale loss to scale negatively with the number of troops in the battle. The final feature change is the Pondicherry update. Treaty ports only function if there's a power rank difference between the port holder and the market it is gaining access. So France doesn't start with access to the British market anymore. And this is effectively a positive change. It won't fix France. France is still strong. Moving past features, there are 22 lines of balance changes. Under features, it is five changes, three of which cover a huge overhaul to government legitimacy. Some of these are effectively part of the feature updates around legitimacy, but there are core balance changes are in two groups, wages and late game resources. Wages first, further changes to effects of changing government and military wages. Upper end of military now gives morale recovery and power projection. Lower end of military negatively impacts power projection. There's also a lessening of the training pen rate penalty and the IG opinion changes from wages now as well. The other wage change is subtly a big one. Building wage targets have been lowered in unincorporated states and for discriminated pops everywhere. Also, buildings now only raise wages if they are either competing for wages or are below the minimum wage target, which is based on the employee's expected standard of living. Rubber and oil availability has been addressed. With rubber, it has been added the pump jacks automated irrigation PM to improve production, whilst oil has been added in low quantities to a lot more places on the map that have all have oil, they just maybe weren't exploited during the time period of the game. There are 15 lines of AI changes, the huge changes here, you have already seen is the AI is more likely to settle wars going nowhere with white peace and end to the forever wars finally. Other notable changes for the AI they are more likely to switch to better PMs. This looks like it needs a bit more work and is called out as being one of the reasons why the rubber only needs a PM change. We'll see. There are a raft of UI changes with the biggest hard to miss. The major notifications are now toasted to the top center of the screen. These include Diplo plays against you, diplomatic changes towards you, and no longer just random migration notifications. There is also a much improved visualization of the journal entries with an outliner flagging unpinned active journal entries now. Last one to flag, which I found really helpful. When on a good screen, at the bottom, there is a list of active trade routes. There are far, far too many changes in the content section for me to cover. Broadly speaking, these are largely positive historical accuracy changes. Things like slowing down the Confederation of Canada, increasing the chances of manifest destiny for the US, increasing the chances of the AI pulling off the Alaska Purchase, that type of change. Again, too many bug fixes to cover, but I will highlight a few. Lifespan have been looked at. The war gold, open market, banned slavery are now 60 months, not 60 years to force change. Battalions assigned to battle are done in descending usable manpower, including morale now. Big one. They have removed the teleporting general exploit. Now, this is still somewhat problematic that they've done this because I still see generals abandoning fronts, including after 
opening a new front with a naval invasion. And lastly, 1.1.1 hotfix fixed four bugs from 1.1, already covered the morale loss one above in features. There's also a bug that meant that capitalist shopkeepers and bureaucrats have no default IG unless they were working in a trade center. And regressive political movements were much more common than progressive ones. And then there was a bug causing some start crashes that thankfully I didn't. I've been Garner, you've been awesome. Appreciate watching this far, a like really does help. So that is update patch 1.1, available to play now. Comment down below which you think is the biggest impact and if any of them have upset you. Subscribe to stay up to date on Victoria 3 updates as well as my gameplay videos on continuing an achievement series. Next up, Lanfangs, Miners, not Miners. Thanks for watching and as always, happy gaming.